What's up? Thanks for coming back. I'm glad that you've joined me again on this wonderful journey that we call life. Actually, I think we call it YouTube, and I think I'm just making YouTube more popular because I'm definitely not monetized. So that's what sucks about being all these channels of us that are below a thousand is that we're, we're keeping views in for YouTube, but mm, yeah, they're like, no, 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 no. I'm sure the check would be paltry anyway. I'm sure I'd be getting like, like a nickel from YouTube. Like there's your monetization, <laughs> but it does kind of feel weird. Um, so click subscribe because I'd like to continue to grow, but not really for fame, not really for infamy. I want to continue to talk about audio description because guess what? The thing I'm about to talk about does not have audio description and that's falsettos. It's another musical because I'm going to continue to review Broadway HD stuff until the end of time, until they die, until, <laughs> until they look at me and they're just like, please, Please stop. Please stop pointing out how inaccessible we are. Please. You're killing us over here. Yeah. Um, I'm so curious to find out if Broadway HD has, like, a diversity, inclusivity, and equ equity position. Because I want to find that person to be like, hey, you know you're not, right? <laughs> you know that that's not a thing for you. There's nothing inclusive about lack of accessibility. So, have fun with that. And two titles does not make you accessible. You know, if I went to the library and I asked, where are your Braille books? And they were like, we have two. Um, the Adventures of Tom Sawyer and Dracula. Which one would you like? <laughs> I'd be like, fuck you. What are you talking? You're a fucking library. What are you? And that's what it feels like every time a streaming service is like, Mm, yes, we have, we do have, we have, um, very, li we just have this small little corner over here. I feel like I'm in, like, the kids area where they, <laughs> you know, they set up little bean bags for kids to read these, you know, picture books. And it's like, no, no, I'm a grown-ass man, and I want to, I want to walk around the rest of, the no, you can't, oh, I can't walk around the rest of the library. Cool, got it. Um, walk around the rest of the library at my own peril. Fine. <sighs> falsettos um I actually really love this musical it's I've done some of the rap from it before you know I sing guys I work in I work in music theater as the, my job um and <laughs> so I was quite familiar with falsettos I was trying to pick out a Broadway HD thing for the week and uh it like it gave me a notification that this was leaving soon and I was like oh no 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 <laughs> I have to see falsettos. This is the Christian Borer, Borer, uh Life from Lincoln Center version. I have to see this. Um, and actually, I think it benefits from this staging. I actually really like the staging of falsettos. Uh, it's The cast is, is terrific across the board. Christian Borel is perfect in the lead. Um, just wow, you know, uh, I, I, God, I love his voice. I just love his voice so much. I've loved it. I loved it in Legally Blonde. Uh, I, I love him on Smash. I'm rewatching Smash right now. It's on Roku. It does not have audio description. I wish it did so much, but at least the first season of Smash. I just love the first season of Smash. Um, and I just, I'm so happy when he's in things. He's easily one of my favorite music theater actors. So to see him here playing Marvin, uh, the lead character of this quirky, intertwined group of people, is fantastic. So the story is that Marvin is a man who uh, is going through a change in his life. He has realized it's time for him to come out of the closet. He has fallen in love with a man named Wizard. Um, clearly a nickname. <laughs> I don't think he, I don't think his birth name was Wizard, but for purposes of the musical, his name is Wizard. Uh, and he that that's not that's not good news for his wife Trina, who 
uh, goes through a lot and feels like she's losing her mind at times. She has a great song called I'm Breaking Down uh, that is hilarious. Um, and Marvin also, Marvin and Trina also have a little boy named Jason. And if that wasn't weird enough, we also have Marvin and Trina's psychiatrist that was trying to help them through everything. Um, he ends up coming into play here because he decides to throw that uh, patient client privilege thing out the window and try to try to date Trina. He's like, well, you don't want her. <laughs> let me let me get up in that. <laughs> so um and then the family keeps kind of extending around that as the as the show progresses there are a few other characters that come in and around but mainly it's about this little like core unit of family um and then it also kind of becomes sad because this film this this uh this musical was written for characters who lived right at the turn of like it's 1979 into 1980 and they're gay, and you can kind of just guess where this musical is going for at least one of the characters. So, um, sadly, yes, we do deal with the loss of one of the characters in the show and their illness, and uh, that's just such a progression, and it just really allows uh, Christian Borrell just to, I mean, he gets the whole thing. He has so many great songs in this. Uh, the show ends with What Would I Do? And it's... Uh, <laughs> it's heartbreaking. Uh, I've, done that, I've done that song on stage before and I was listening to Christian do it and I was just like, I could have made all of your choices and I didn't and I'm so sorry. <laughs> like, I just... I, it's, it's, it's so brilliant. Um, my favorite song of his is Father to Son. Uh, it's so simple and quiet. But it's his sort of apology to Jason for all of this stuff that he's put Jason through. And they're fun songs, too. I thought the baseball game was really interesting, having them all there together. And they're singing about, you know, the various things. And I love the jokes about how they're watching a whole bunch of Jewish kids play baseball and none of them are good at baseball. Um, Jason has a bunch of songs... For a little kid, he has a lot of songs, a lot of solos too, which is really interesting. If you have a kid that's interested in music theater and he's a boy and you're like, I don't know what for him to sing other than Oliver, tune him into falsettos because there are plenty of, of little Jason pieces in here <laughs> for, for him to go out and sing. Um, it's, it's heartfelt, it's comedic, it's light. It moves quickly, sometimes almost to a detriment. Um, that's my only problem with falsetto is it's like I like the music, but it does kind of feel like we're barreling through to get to the AIDS. And by the time we get to the AIDS, I'm not 100% sure that I've felt that I've spent enough time with Marvin and Wizard where I'm just like, oh my God, don't break up this couple. Like there's a huge difference between them and like Collins and Angel. Like, the chemistry between Collins and Angel and Rent is just... I think it has more of an emotionally resonant moment in that than, than these two do, even though they play really well off of each other. Um, it's just a weird... It's kind of a different thing, and it's it, the tone of this is a little bit happier and perkier and quirkier and funnier... And it does try to pull it back with a lot of ballads, and the ballads are great. The music is great. This is this is basically an opera because they don't talk. There isn't dialogue. It's just song, 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 song. It moves pretty quickly. Um, it's not a musical that overstays its welcome. And if you just like singing, this is a great musical just to hear singing. You don't have to sit there and worry about dialogue. Um, I on the audio description end, I was disappointed because because of that. The question that I always ask myself when I'm trying to grade, and this is what's really important, because I want you guys to know that I love falsettos, because we're going to have to have a serious conversation. This is why Broadway HD, as a streaming service, is going to hate my fucking guts pretty soon. 
Um, this is unwatchable. It is. There's no real reason to watch this. There's nothing that you can't get from listening to the cast recording. Because of the lack of dialogue, we gain nothing from watching this. Uh, it's just watching the whole thing through. You're not really losing. There might be, like, a song that didn't make the, the cast record. I didn't go through and, like, like hold, <laughs> hold up the cast recording and go through and check off... Okay, there's that song, there's that song, there's that song, there's that song. There might be, like, a reprise or something in there that you miss, but I always ask myself with these things, but is it worth more than the cast recording? And the answer is no. There's nothing... You know what I'm saying? Like, there's nothing there to uh, actually... Ju justify watching this production because we don't get any uh, I, I get nothing about costumes so all the the hard work that was done by any costume team is out the window I get nothing about staging I get nothing about set design um, I when they change locations which they do frequently I don't know how it, do we bring set on to help them change the scene are they just staged differently how do we stage the baseball game? How do we stage the bar mitzvah? How do we stage Wizard's hospital room? There are so many questions because otherwise it just feels like a concert version of this show. And in that regard, I really didn't need this because unless you're going to offer me audio description and give me something else, uh, there's really no reason for this. So I've been looking for... I know it sounds like I'm purposefully trying to tank, but I've been looking for something that actually falls under this category because I've graded the past couple ones because they actually have passed that threshold for me. Um, when I'm thinking, what I'm thinking about grading is it's like, do I feel like you will get more than just listening to a cast album? And the answer so far has been yes for everything that I reviewed from Allegiance to 42nd Street to, uh, you know, She Loves Me, Mr. Saturday Night, Toxic Avenger, all those have these really great scenes of dialogue and back and forth. But when you cut, when you pick a show like Falsettos, when it's just music, 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 and there's no audio description to bring it in, then the question is, why am I here? Why am I not just listening to the cast recording? Because basically that's what I'm doing. It's just coming through my TV. You know, in song order, like in show order. It's so, um, I'm basically reviewing the cast recording of Falsettos. And it's, I, I still love it. And I think uh, Christian Borle has a great voice and Andrew Reynolds. And, but, and I don't know. It's just, it's, it's disappointing. Um, so, as much as I enjoy the musical, and I, I, I mean, there are songs in here that will forever be a part of the rep that I would like to either do or have done, and this musical means a hell of a lot to me, this is a prime example of why Broadway HD needs to take accessibility seriously and not ignore me when I email them, which is what they're doing. Um, so, anyway, I'm giving falsettos the grade of unwatchable. Um... There's no point. It serves no purpose to the blind and visually impaired community. You know, if you're sitting there and you're thinking, what am I, how do I spend my $8 subscription at Broadway HD? It's not this. Sadly, it has nothing to do with the musical. It has nothing to do with the cast. But there's just, whatever your music streaming service is, just download the cast album and listen to it and save yourself the time. Uh, there, you will, you're not going to gain or lose anything. Anyway, um, that's it. And that's why I'm here is to talk audio description. So I appreciate all the subscribes and likes because sadly Broadway HD doesn't think my 158 subscribers is enough subscribers that they have to pay attention to me. If I added some zeros to that, I'm sure they give a shit. So I'm just going to keep plugging away and asking for subscribers and... 
can try uh, and just keep trying to further audio description as a medium for blind and visually impaired users and talk about film and and why we love it and why we still want, want to watch it and why we just need the accessibility to do so. Uh, it's not a niche audience. I'm not the only blind person out here who watches movies. I just happen to be the one bold enough to be on YouTube to talk about it. So, anyway, thanks for watching. I have a website, MacTheMovieGuy.com. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or threads at MacTheMovieGuy. You can go to the audio description project, adp.acb.org. It'll let you know what has audio description and where you can watch it. And you can go to the adna.org. That's the adna.org. And it will let you know who, when you have something that's being narrated, uh, who's doing the narration for your favorite films and television series. That's it for me today. I will review something else for you guys and see you on the other side.